The Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient Hebrew manuscripts first found in 1947 on the shore of the Dead Sea. They are some of the most fascinating literatures of the Second Temple period that enabled scholars to push back the date of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, to no later than the time of Jesus. The Dead Sea Scrolls have enlightened our understanding in this period, the early Judaism, and the beginning of Christianity. The discovery of Dead Sea Scrolls is one of the most important finds in the history of modern archaeology. They were found accidentally by non-archaeologists between November 1946 until February 1947 by the Bedouins while herding their sheep and goats along the cliffs of the west shore of the Dead Sea. The first seven Dead Sea Scrolls were found in now labeled Cave No. 1. Eventually, fragments of over 800 documents would come to light in a total of 11 caves. After the discovery, the Bedouins took the scrolls to the Jacobite Syrian Church and the spiritual leader of St. Mark's Monastery in Jerusalem named Mar Athanasius Samuel and bought the four scrolls for $100. The other three were sold to Jewish archaeologists from Hebrew University, Eliasar Sukkanek Yadin. Around this period, in November 29, 1947, the United Nations had just passed a resolution that part of the land of Palestine would be Jewish independent state. Suddenly, war broke out between the Jews and the Arab nations in May 1948, and this war was known to be independence war in the history of the nation of Israel. During the war, Athanasius Samuel placed the four scrolls in a safe deposit vault of a New York City bank until 1954. Yigael Yadin, son of Sokhenik Yadin, was then in New York lecturing about the Dead Sea Scrolls. When he heard that four scrolls dated 200 BC was in an ad in the Wall Street Journal, he immediately purchased the scrolls for 250,000 US dollars. Overnight, Yadin became famous in the world of Dead Sea Scrolls. Soon after the declaration of the independence of the State of Israel, more scrolls were discovered in Qumran area. The most famous scroll of Isaiah is now housed in a museum in Jerusalem, the shrine of the book. The description of the scrolls, particularly the famous Isaiah scroll, is a complete and best copy of Isaiah, the only biblical manuscript among Dead Sea Scrolls that survive intact, written in Aramaic script, 23.5 feet long and 9.5 in width. The writing was close to the wording of Masoretic texts, proving that the Jewish scribes have transmitted their sacred scriptures down through the centuries faithfully and accurately. Some scrolls are rules of the community that wrote these scrolls called Manual of Discipline, while others are thanksgiving hymns, similar to the style of canonical psalms and it provides insight into the ethos and mindset of the community. Other fascinating scrolls are called War of the Sons of Light and Sons of Darkness that portray the Jewish military strategy and operations and their portrayal of the eschatological battle at the end of human history. The Dead Sea Scrolls include fragments from every book of the Old Testament except the Book of Esther written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Dead Sea Scroll scholars have not identified yet all of the discovered texts. Nevertheless, those identified texts are divided in three general groups. About 40% of the identified texts are from the Hebrew Scriptures or Old Testament Bibles, including Pentateuch, Prophets, and Writings, except the Book of Esther. Approximately, another 30% are texts from the Second Temple period, which ultimately were not canonized in the Hebrew Bible, and we call them Apocrypha and Sodopigrypha. And that includes Tovit, Judith, Maccabees, Enoch, Jubilee, 
and others. And the remainder, roughly 30%, are sectarian manuscripts or previously unknown documents that shed lights on the rules and beliefs of this sex or group within Judaism, like the community rule, the war scrolls, community blessings, and other commentaries. Why do we have Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, during the time of Jesus, the nation of Israel was a colony of the Roman Empire, and Judaism comprised several different sects, like the Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, Silots, Essenes, or Qumran community, with variety of forms and practices that flourished during the late Second Temple period, that is from 200 BC to 70 AD. In 147 BC, the Hasmonean family, led by Judas Maccabeus, led the independent kingdom of Judea after defeating the Syrian enemies. For the next 80 years, the Hasmonean ruled the land with an iron fist. They served as both king of the Jews and high priest of the temple. During this period, religious sectarian emerged. The Sadducees, a group of priests from the family of Sadok, held important position in the temple. However, they also shared in the corruption of secular leaders, the kings, and the princesses in the land. At the same time, out of the group of scribes and sages, non-Sadokites, many Israelites began to shift their attention to Torah. They called themselves parishes. From them, the Bible became alternative as the center of their religious life instead of temple. Since the first temple was allowed by God to be destroyed by enemies, this group began to question its legitimacy, especially that the second temple was rebuilt under the auspices of foreign power, the Persians. The third group is called the Essenes, and some scholars suggested that the Essenes, the sect that produced the Dead Sea Scrolls, was a breakaway sect from Sadokites while others from parishes because of the increase and influence of Hellenization and secularism not only in the entire nation but in religious group as well. In 152 BC, Jonathan, a non-Sadokite, was ordained high priest of Israel, and for the Essenes, this act was a great provocation against the will of God. Consequently, the group retreated to the desert in Qumran near the Dead Sea to live a life of ritual purity, observing the ancient law and awaiting the day when the teacher of righteousness would be accepted by all Jews as high priests and would return once again to Jerusalem. They built their lives in the desert and began to build their own religious rites, including the writing and copying of ancient religious texts which we now call Dead Sea Scrolls. Some said that John the Baptist was a member of this group because in many ways the life of John resembled that of the Essenes, but that is very hard to prove. For many complicated reasons, in 70 AD, war broke out between Romans and the Jewish people in the entire Holy Land. Josephus gives us the details of this war in his book, Antiquities and the Jewish Wars. Jerusalem fell and the temple was destroyed by the Roman armies. Masada, Caesarea, Galilee, and the entire land were torched and were all turned down. Ultimately, the Essenes saved and kept the scrolls in 11 caves in Qumran before the Romans destroyed their settlement in 68. AD. These hundreds of scrolls were there in the caves for the next 2,000 years until the discovery that begins in 1947. Why are the Dead Sea Scrolls important in our time? Prior to the discovery of the scrolls, many critics of the Bible accuse us that the Bible in modern time has been corrupted and is not well preserved. The Muslims, Mormons, and other religious groups claim that the original was lost, and this is the reason why their holy books are different from the Bible. They claim that theirs are true, and the Bible is not. Going back to our history, during the war in 70 AD, 
the temple was destroyed and many scrolls were burned. The group of parishes fled to Yavne and founded the school of Torah that eventually evolved into Rabbinic Judaism. The Jewish Christians during that time fled to Pella and continued their missionary works in Asia and Europe. Other groups like the Sadducees and the Essenes were dispersed and lost in the history. Then 60 years later, in 132 AD, another war broke out between Jews and Romans. Rabbi Akiba claimed that he was the Messiah, but only few supported his claim. He was killed by the Romans, and large numbers of Jewish people became prisoners and were sold as slaves throughout the empire. Those surviving Jews continued to be faithful to Judaism, and they preserved the Old Testament manuscripts according to their tradition, called in Hebrew, Masora. The Masorets or Masoretes were rabbis who made it their special work to correct and preserve in writing the entire Old Testament text. The Old Testament that we use today is translated and copied from what is called the Masoretic text. However, we don't have copies of the original works of Masoretes from 2nd to 5th centuries. They're all gone. What we do have is the Bible written by Jewish scholars in the 10th century called Aleppo Codex, which dates to 935 AD. And that is the reason why many skeptics criticize our Bible because we cannot produce any Hebrew Old Testament texts older than 935 AD. Upon the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, it plays a crucial role to assess the accuracy of the Old Testament that we have in modern time. We have now manuscripts that predated the Masoretic text, the Aleppo Codex, by about 1,000 years. The Aleppo Codex is the Bible used by the Jewish synagogue in Aleppo, Syria, and is now under the custody of Israel Museum in Jerusalem. This Bible was written in 935 AD. After years of careful study, it has been concluded that the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Masoretic text, despite the thousand-year gap of copying and transmission, the texts were found to be almost identical. The Dead Sea Scrolls provide valuable evidence that the Old Testament had been accurately and carefully preserved. It means the text that Jesus read is similar to the text that we read in our time. No difference, no alteration happened, no changes except that the truthfulness of the Word of God has been revealed. As the prophet Isaiah says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God stands forever. Isaiah 48. Another thing that we could establish upon the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls is the issue on the lost books or prophecies in the Old Testament. There were no lost books of the Bible because the vast majority of Dead Sea Scrolls were simply copies of books of the ancient time from 250 to 150 BC. From Genesis to Malachi, they are all intact except the book of Esther. What kind of Messiah was expected by the first century Jews? The Dead Sea Scrolls reveal the messianic expectation of the Jews during the time of Jesus. There are similarities to the messianic hope written in the New Testament, though with some significant differences. In Dead Sea Scrolls, we can find that they expect of a personal Messiah rather than a nation or a race. The Messiah would be a descendant of David, will perform miracles, including the resurrection of the dead. The Messiah would be human, not angel, yet possesses divine attributes. The Messiah shall heal the wounded, shall raise the dead, and shall bring good news to the poor. This passage sounds very similar to the ministry of Jesus as recorded in the Gospels. But there are also differences in Christian faith. The Dead Sea Scrolls believe in two messiahs. Christians have always believed that there is only one messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, while the Isin community believe in two, one an Aaronic or priestly messiah, 
and the other a Davidic or royal messiah who leads a war to end the evil age. The Aaronic Messiah will be defeated, but the Davidic Messiah will triumph at the end of time. The Essenes were also strict on matters of ceremonial purity, while Jesus criticized these laws. Jesus interacts with tax collectors, lepers, sinners, women, and even touched the body of a dead person. Jesus taught his followers to love the enemies, while the Essenes taught hatred toward theirs. The Qumran community rejected the inclusion of women, Gentiles, and sinners, while Christ reached out to these very groups. Because of these differences, we can say that the Essenes were not part of the ministry of Jesus. Finally, the Dead Sea Scrolls have proven to be significant discovery in our time, confirming the accurate preservation of our Old Testament texts, the messianic prophecies of the coming Messiah, and valuable insight into the first century Judaism. Thank you for being here. Stay safe, please subscribe, and God bless.